Yes, yes, I, I know what you're all thinking. I do have quite the nice new look, don't I? As well as maybe uh, a little, little more higher quality audio, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. Trying some new things out with it to see if I can get some better, better quality audio for the videos. So today I'm bringing you an interesting little case from a creator named Pim's Crypt. Now, Pim here says that the Dead by Daylight community is super toxic and obviously needs changed. So Pim's solution to that and how they're about to go about and try and change the community and solve the toxicity issue is they're going to hijack everybody's game that they come in contact with. They're going to go ahead and just ruin all of your games every time they get in to a lobby as a killer. That's that's their goal, apparently. So let's go ahead and see what Pim has to say about Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight needs to change. This asymmetrical multiplayer horror game has been a major part of my life for the past two years. It has been a rocky relationship to say the least. In July 2021, I released a 40 minute long video essay on the topic. I addressed some things that make the game great and a lot of things that make it not that. This video made no visible impact on the negative aspects of the game or its community. Please allow me to save you the trouble of bothering to go find that original video from, what was it, two years ago? I already glanced through it and it's just more of this exact video without the whole uh, wholesome bubba experiment. It's more of Pim just complaining about the community, complaining about toxicity, and more of just examples of Pim just being bad at the game and then blaming the community for being toxic. And that's why Pim is bad, basically. That's all it really is. Don't, don't bother yourselves unless you really, really want to. And that wasn't exactly the intention. It was more of an excuse for me to rant for a while, to get some grievances out of my system and maybe, finally, move on to a different comfort game. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that laugh coming from? Okay, so after having spent literally a thousand hours more on the game, I now bring you a video that is a genuine attempt to start something. To create the change that Dead by Daylight so desperately needs. Okay, so I have to ask, what makes you so certain the game needs any fixing, or the community needs any fixing? Furthermore, what makes you, who has made you the de facto leader or the, the voice for the community that things need to change? Because I'm not convinced that anybody really cares. I'm not convinced that this is nearly as big of an issue as you are making it out to be. I feel like you're the one who has the problem and you're trying to make it sound like it's a much larger issue than it really is. Because I don't hear much complaining out of the Dead by Daylight community. So can you give some examples, maybe some, you know, larger streamers, YouTubers, etc. Some, some examples that this community is so messed up and it needs help. Even if you're not a fan of this game, even if you haven't played it even once, I'm going to show you some interesting findings about the ways players interact and can interact with one another when the rules of a video game are broken. This is the Wholesome Bubba Project. I've spent months writing a 30 plus page study under the same name as this video. It's fully available to read right now, the link is down below. It's not exactly on the level of a peer reviewed university level study, but it's somewhat structured like one. Look, my student loans can't be for nothing. This video is going to be a summary of this study, some of my results and my conclusion. But first, some background. In short, Dead by Daylight has one player in the role of a killer character facing off against four other players in the role of survivors in these one-sided death matches or trials. The killer's goal is to hunt, hit, and carry the survivors to sacrificial hooks scattered around the map and have them stay there until either the timer runs out and they die 
or until a fellow survivor comes to the rescue. It normally takes two hits for a survivor to go down, and three hooks for a survivor to permanently die. The goal of the survivors is to avoid the killer, by hiding, running, looping around obstacles, blocking and stunning the killer with wooden pallets, and jumping through windows. That probably won't work forever though, so the more permanent solution is to work on a total of five randomly spawned generators which power two exit gates. Get one of those open, and you're free to go. Opening a gate triggers the so-called end game collapse, meaning that any survivor who has not left the trial before the timer reaches zero is instantly killed on the spot. Now let's gather all of these rules together and throw them in a bin. I mean, but why? Why take all of the established rules and throw them away when that's what everybody is expecting to be playing with? What, what's the point behind it? Since there's no explicit time limit forced on any of the players, apart from the ones they put on themselves, a trial in Dead by Daylight can potentially go on for as long as an hour, in which case the trial will automatically shut down to prevent players from holding the game hostage. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry, what? An hour? Oh god, I... <laughs> Yeah, if you hijacked my game that I wanted to sit down and play and enjoy quickly when I have my free time, if you hijacked that from me for an hour, yeah, you would you would definitely see some toxicity. I cannot blame people that get upset with that. That is fucking ridiculous. However, this is way more time than any trial will normally take. This freedom is what makes the wholesome Bubba project possible. The project revolves around a licensed character named the Cannibal, otherwise called Leatherface. Or Bubba. <coughs> the Cannibal is often and rightfully associated with some of the more toxic tendencies among the game's player base. Due to his ability to down a survivor with a single chainsaw attack, at any point in the game, you'll seldom be surprised to see a cannibal player camping right in front of a sacrificial hook, waiting to swiftly strike down any player who attempts to save their captured teammate. It's equally unsurprising to see the same player use either of their weapons to repeatedly hit the hooked survivor. This doesn't benefit the killer from a gameplay perspective, it's simply rudeness for rudeness sake. Look, I'm gonna be honest, all I hear in this clip is just you crying like there's no toxicity to be found here really you, like the first thing you bring up is the fact that bubba has the ability to one hit with the chainsaw oh well that yeah and that's why that's one of the reasons why the candle is popular yes that would make sense because if you can one hit a survivor that is better than having to two hit a survivor basic math by the way, just so you're aware, very, very basic, like kindergarten level maths right here. All right. And then you go on to say, what about like, uh, he can one hit with a chainsaw. Uh, people like to camp when they, they'll down you and then they'll throw you on the hooks and then they'll camp you. That's not for one. That's not even relevant to the character. Like that's just something that people do. That's a play style that people will have, right? It's just something as a mechanic in the game that people can abuse. Oh, well, and oh, they hit you while you're on the hook. Wow. What crucify them now? Clearly they are just horrible, horrible human beings. Like, what is this? <laughs> uh, all I hear is crying and not being good at the game. That's all I get out of this. The character has also been the subject of a significant controversy. When he was originally introduced in September of 2017, the cannibal had the ability to unlock skin masks based on the appearances of the game's original four survivors. One of which is black. This resulted in some killer players deliberately using her mask to emulate the racist act of wearing blackface. The harmful intent was implied by how they used this particular cosmetic item and exclusively harassed people playing as black survivors while wearing it. As of January 2022, the item is no longer available in the game. But I think it's worth noting that Dead by Daylight players had the option to wear blackface for over four years before it was removed. <laughs> oh god, I even knew this was coming. I did. I knew that this clip was coming up. And I still can't not laugh at it. It's just so ridiculous. Like, I'm, I'm gonna come right out and say it. 
Pim. I don't care about your outrage. I don't. I don't, and I would be willing to bet most of the community doesn't. Most people do not give a fuck. But this idea that it uh that it was wrong for <laughs> for cannibal to be able to quote unquote wear blackface did you think that like anybody was actually thinking that when they created it or did they just kind of throw in a mechanic that is part of leatherface's backstory part of his lore that makes sense and then they just created it so that he can use any of the generic already there survivors because i think originally there's only like a handful of survivors that you could choose from like nobody important it was just generic random people with slightly different uh attributes in some way or another right I, i'm i might be wrong it's been a long time since then but you want to sit there and for one blame the developers for what people were doing with this mechanic saying that they should have removed it earlier and <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, Pim, but uh, there's a lot of edgelord kids out there playing video games. All right, I don't, I don't know if you're tracking that or not, but uh, I, I remember Modern Warfare 2 lobby days where they had just absolutely ridiculous things going on, just a lot of stupid stuff. That, and, and I'd be willing to bet a majority of it, people didn't even know what they were actually saying or actually mean any of what they were saying. They were just saying it to be edgy. So obviously this is probably the same case. Just a bunch of younger people trying to be edgy. That's all this is. And you're trying to make this out to be like something that the Dead by Daylight developers should have just immediately squashed. How dare they? How dare they allow somebody to have blackface in the game. Ugh. Finally, I'll leave you with a question, Pim. Would it have been better or worse if they created that mechanic, introduced it into the game, but then didn't allow for Leatherface to wear one of the black people's, the black characters' faces? Would it have been better or worse? Would that be more racist or less racist? Because I think if you're going to introduce that mechanic and then completely exclude one race, that seems more racist than to just allow it to happen to all of them. That seems far worse to me. What do you think, Pim? Lastly, there is the more general issue of hostility in the Dead by Daylight community. Any competitive video game is bound to bring out some strong emotions in people. What makes Dead by Daylight stand out is that some players have made it their sole mission to actively evoke these emotions by harassing killer players for their own enjoyment. This is in fact so common that there's even a name for it. Bully squads. <laughs> I can't take this game and this video seriously. Bully squads. Jesus, how ridiculous. All that makes me think of is uh, the old bully hunters. That little non-existent service that uh, some weirdos try to create. That's what I think of whenever uh, it gets mentioned in this video. <laughs> If you ever happen to find yourself in the same lobby as one of these squads, and you will, the survivor players will make it their number one priority to blind you with flashlights, stun you with pallets, and by jumping out of lockers, loop and teabag around you, to the point that they sometimes don't even work on generators. Sure, they might get some funny clips out of it that will end up in some killers getting owned compilation on YouTube, but they only get that footage by going out of their way to be assholes and ruining the experience for other players. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you right there. You wanna talk about ruining the experience for everyone else in the game? I, I want everybody to just make a little mental note. Keep this in the back of your mind for later on in the video when you see what Pim does. Keep that little, that little mental note there that Pim hates it that people ruin the experience for others with their toxicity. The lucrative nature of this type of content has made it so that some YouTube creators have profited highly both from being bullied by others and by being bullies themselves. Typing the words Dead by Daylight Toxic in the YouTube search bar will generate a flood of video suggestions about the most toxic Dead by Daylight streamer ever, toxic player doing this, and toxic player doing that, so on and so forth. 
Calling out bad behavior is obviously a good thing. That the problems are being monetized for entertainment value rather than being seriously discussed is not. Naturally, it's up to the developers to try and make their game and community as nice and inviting as possible. But the whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, let's relax, okay? First off, the developer's not responsible to do anything for you or the community. Admittedly, we would like to promote a, uh, a game development team that is very adhering to the community and we do want to we do want to promote game developers that actually care that will take the time to update and fix problems where they see fit however i'm not going to sit here and say that you're entitled to anything just because you're a member of the community like you seem to think that you are it is not the dead by daylight developers responsibility to make you feel at home in a safe space while playing their game the community can do as they please the developer has pretty much already spoken without speaking the fact that they are not really willing to sit there and police the community as hard as you want them to means that they have decided to not do that they've decided to avoid it they decided to let the community do what the community wants to do. It's not anyone else but your own fault that you don't like it. And there's no, nobody has to fix themselves, right? The game and the community doesn't have to bend to your will. It's not, that's not how this works. You either conform to the community, put up with it, or you leave. You don't get to change the community into what you want just because you think the game is toxic and in dire need of change when honestly i don't know many other people that be that believe this that actually think the same way that you do but again it's not the developer's responsibility it's not the community's it's your responsibility to either conform leave or ignore those are your options the community can still make an effort to do better by themselves. That's what I want to try to do. The idea behind what I've chosen to call the wholesome Bubba is to put a counterweight on this more toxic aspect of the Dead by Daylight community. To show how the cannibal can potentially be used as a force for good. Yeah, that's a sentence that sounds pretty troubling out of context. <laughs> During the course of 50 so trials, I attempted to play as the cannibal without sacrificing, downing, or even harming a single survivor. That's easy though. I could have gotten results simply by leaving the game running while I stare into the bathroom mirror trying to find what remains of my soul. There's just nothing there! But that wouldn't have made the game any more wholesome. In order for Wholesome Bubba to live up to his name, I needed to offer an alternative to regular play. Something I decided to call Wholesome Play. This term is gonna come up a lot, so let's define it real quick. Wholesome Play isn't just about rejecting the intended rules of a game. It's about coming together across enemy lines, so to speak, and collectively come up with activities that focus on nothing but having fun. More importantly though, it's supposed to be a positive palate cleanser, no pun intended. If you've played several trials in a row against killer players who are either way better than you or who are just really mean, the purpose of a wholesome trial is to reinvigorate the joy of playing this game. So how is a wholesome Bubba supposed to go about spreading this joy? Let's go through it step by step. To encourage survivor players to take part in wholesome play, there needs to be a clear way for the wholesome Bubba to communicate his intentions. Dead by Daylight doesn't offer any in-game text or audio-based communication during gameplay, and unlike survivors, killer players don't have any dedicated buttons for making communicative gestures. So the first thing I needed to do while conducting this study was to come up with ways of gaining the trust of the survivor players with the very limited tools I did have. This presented the occasional challenge, since the first thing survivor players tend to do when they spot a killer is to scatter like flies. I learned that a wholesome Bubba can solve this in one of two ways. Either you can use your mouse or right thumbstick to make Bubba do a nodding motion, giving the survivors some positive affirmation. 
Or you can be a goofy little guy and just spin around. I wouldn't recommend this to people who easily get motion sickness from playing games from a first person perspective. But while your screen will quickly become a blurry mess, it will clearly signal to the survivor players that you have no intention of taking the trial seriously. So I know that that was a lot. There was a, a lot to, <laughs> to watch in that clip. Uh, but I wanted to highlight to you guys what exactly it is that Pim is doing. Pim is queuing up in these games. Hopefully, hopefully it is the casual game mode and not the ranked. But Pim is queuing up in these game modes and just hijacking the game as a killer. Refusing to do what the killers are supposed to do. And whilst doing that, trying to get people to play literal elementary school games with them. Trying to get the survivors to engage in elementary school games with the killer instead of playing the actual game that they signed up to play. Oh, dear God. And you think that you are this beacon of virtue in the dark, dark times that Dead by Daylight's community is facing. Oh, Pim. If a survivor allows you to get close, you can also give them a friendly boo. This first step will often require you to be persistent, but not too persistent. It's sometimes necessary to give survivors some space and let them observe that you're playing around with the others before they finally let their guard down. Those are the do's, but what about the don'ts? First off, no chainsaw. Ever. No one hears the revving of a chainsaw and believes that anything but a slaughter or the cutting of a tree will follow. And Bubba is no lumberjack. Ah! The chainsaw's ability to instantly down survivors is one of the primary reasons why the cannibal has such a bad reputation to begin with. And the wholesome Bubba is supposed to distance himself from that reputation as much as possible. So no chainsaw. Mm. While I generally didn't want to use Bubba's hammer either, since it implies violence, I couldn't deny the cases where it was useful. Bubba can't make gestures, as previously mentioned, so swinging the hammer was an effective substitute for when I wanted survivors to go in a specific direction or perform a specific task. It seldom felt like something I had to do though. The one situation where I was forced to use the hammer was when a survivor purposefully body blocked me into a corner. In an attempt to show my displeasure, I used a camera to shake holes in Bubba's head, but the survivor didn't budge. I tried waiting, but that didn't work either. So eventually I hit them, which also didn't change anything. So despite the holes in Bubba's code, I was forced to down the survivor in order to regain my bodily autonomy. Nobody puts Bubba in a corner, and ignoring consent isn't wholesome. <laughs> Did you ever wonder that maybe there's a reason that that player was blocking you? That maybe, just maybe, they were frustrated because you have hijacked their game that they sat down to play and decided that you're not going to allow them to play it. Did it ever cross your mind that maybe they're frustrated so they're trolling you back by trying to block you? That maybe they're angry with you? That maybe you're in the wrong? No? Didn't, didn't ever occur to you? Never even... Crossed your mind? Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't think so. I was just, I just wanted to clarify. I just wanted to ask. This works both ways as well. If a wholesome Bubba player notices that a survivor might not be into the idea of wholesome play, if they even refuse to be near you, that needs to be respected. No one can be forced to have a wholesome time. This rule stands even when all survivors refuse to participate in wholesome play. The mission of a wholesome Bubba is positive, and as such, it needs to respect consent. Always. This brings us to a dilemma. Wholesome play doesn't elect winners or losers, nor is it about gathering points. However, Dead by Daylight is fundamentally built around these ideas. Even if you, as a wholesome bubba, are simply following a survivor around, the game will interpret this as a chase. This grants so-called blood points, the game's primary currency, both to you and the survivor player at the end of the trial. Unfortunately, this can't be avoided, but that doesn't mean that players should actively attempt to try and gather points. When survivor players notice that a killer player is being friendly, they often take that as an invitation to engage in point farming. They'll try to bring you along all across the map and use each and every single pallet to stun you. They'll try to get themselves hooked so that their teammates can get points for unhooking them. A wholesome Bubba doesn't do or encourage 
any of that. Because if gathering blood points becomes the focus, it's not much different from a regular trial. No, oh God, at least you have a line drawn somewhere, right, Pim? <laughs> what an odd hill to die on, right? Like, what an odd place to plant your flag. You decide that you're going to hijack the game from everybody else and not allow them to play the way that is meant to be played, the way that they want to play, but you will not, will not endorse or allow point farming. What an odd line to not cross. Once I learned how to befriend Survivor players, I needed to figure out what to actually do with them. Thankfully, Survivor players are a really creative bunch, and it's in large part thanks to their creativity that I've come up with a list of activities that you can try during a session of wholesome play. High and low vault loops. These activities are similar, but different enough to have their own names. The high vault loop works almost like a playground slide. Everyone stands in a row and waits for their turn, as the player at the front jumps out of a window or falls from any kind of higher elevation. The higher floor of a building or a small hill, for example. Don't worry, survivors have really good knees and won't get hurt no matter how far they fall. And that's why you don't skip. Low Vault Loops also uses windows, but takes place on ground level. The downside to this activity is that windows will be momentarily blocked for individual survivors after a specific number of vaults. A solution to this problem is to make sure that the game is played in a place with multiple windows. Maypole Dancing On each map, there is a basement, with four sacrificial hooks standing back to back in the middle. The shape of these hooks is somewhat reminiscent of a traditional maypole, which are danced around during seasonal European festivities. Just like dancing during those festivities, dancing around the maypole in Dead by Daylight can be done in multiple ways. Clockwise, counterclockwise, backwards, fast, slow, while crouching… Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Frankly, I feel like I wouldn't be much of a Swede if I didn't recommend an activity like this. Peekaboo! It's, it's literally just peekaboo. If there's a wall or a bubba-sized tree or rock nearby, the wholesome bubba player can play around with survivors by simply hiding and reappearing. Over and over again. Personally, I find this to be a fun game to play with survivors who are focused on generators. Rather than just waiting for them to be done, playing peekaboo can make waiting a little more fun. At the very least, for the wholesome bubba player. Spin and circle dancing. If there's a relatively open space for all players to move around, any part of a map can become a dance floor. If the survivor players want to make things even more disco, they can also bring along some flashlights, making what was once a tool for harassment a tool for dance parties. Hell yeah! Tree and rock looping. If you're on a map with lots of trees and or larger rocks, you can use these to make improvised loops. Maybe you want to loop around trees standing opposite of each other, maybe you want to run around in a specific pattern, or say screw it to any kind of structure and just run around while trying not to hit each other. And finally, the end game collapse party. Once an exit gate has opened, and there is at least more than one player close by, the end game collapse party is a great way for everyone to give their final goodbyes and engage in some limited time fun. Players can dance, spin around, run, vault through nearby windows, slam and jump in and out of lockers, basically anything they want before the timer runs out. The end game collapse party might even attract survivor players who were previously cautious or afraid of the wholesome. Okay, so I want you as a viewer to put yourself in the shoes of the people that have their games hijacked in this way as pim wants to do right imagine you get home from work college whatever you do you get home and you boot up dead by daylight because you want to just play some casual competitive fun game with your friends or maybe just some randoms online and you boot into a lobby and this is what you find is a killer who refuses to play the game won't actually allow you to do anything other than speed through it hopefully that's that that's it you don't get the fun competitive back and forth that you were hoping for you sat in lobby or in queue i mean for let's say three minutes waiting now you have to spend maybe 10 minutes in this game and then you're gonna have to spend another three minutes in queue again to get another game just to be able to play a single normal game of dead by daylight 
when you load in instead of the competitive game you were expecting against a fierce and spoopy killer you are now playing playground games with leatherface are you are you happy about this like is it just me or is this actually just as bad or worse in terms of trolling the game as the people that Pim is complaining about. Me personally, I'm going to go ahead and say that it's at least just as bad. And I genuinely hope that you get whatever punishment that is normally given out for people who ruin the game and the experience for other players. I genuinely hope that some dev somewhere has seen this video somehow, seen your clips, seen your video, and somehow got your info and just went ahead and punished your account. I want to know how many games you had to ruin to get the footage for this. I really do. I want to know how many games you ruined for other people by just refusing to play the game. The thing that I hate most of all about this is that Pim here thinks they're so above everybody. Pim thinks that they're so much better in terms of a human being, so much more ethical. Well, Pim isn't. Pim isn't, you know, being mean. No, 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 no. Pim isn't being mean in that because that ruins the game. Toxicity ruins the game. Not somebody refusing to play. No, toxicity is the problem. As somebody who comes from the Counter-Strike community again, I would much, much rather have somebody who is toxic but plays the game versus somebody who just refuses to play the game in the way that we expect them to play. Because at that point, I have wasted my time. You have wasted my time. I logged in, booted up the game, expecting this experience. You are causing me to get another experience that I do not want. You are just as bad. And I genuinely do hope that your account gets some type of punishment just for the games you've ruined in this video alone. Maybe think before you do things. Like, it's not, it's not that hard. Don't ruin the experience for other people. You are complaining that toxicity is ruining your experience, so instead, you go ahead and you refuse to play the game while playing, like, just trying to play elementary school games with people instead of playing the actual game that they signed up and wanted to play. How are you better? The ego that you have on you is astounding to me. To everybody else watching, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I genuinely hope that your games don't get ruined like all the people that we just watched in these uh, Dead by Daylight clips. Remember, don't be like Pim. Just play the game. Be a normal human being. Play the game you signed up to play, and I will see you all next time.